My pride, our pride, for their pride to go to a person who is Christian. They are fighting for their uh, right uh, to participate in lawful elections that are free from fraud and forgery. The Greens have shown, and the witnesses that testified here have shown that uh, not only there is a constitutional problem in that uh, the Mr. Obama's eligibility that his father was not a good citizen, but we have clear evidence of fraud and forgery. The Mr. Obama's birth certificate, his social security number, and since those are primary documents, and all the other documents that were issued based on those two. We also presented evidence showing that Mr. Obama used other last names to the floor and to the water, and we do not have any evidence of him changing his name from Soyatora to Obama, and the fact that he was an inclusion of Indonesia, there is no evidence uh, to show that this uh, was changed. Based on all the about uh, the plaintiffs uh, submit that uh, they proven uh, uh, that they met their burden of proof and uh, uh, Mr. Obama should be found ineligible. Moreover, I have uh, issued a subpoena. Your Honor has stated to Mr. Obama that uh, this subpoena needs to be honored. He should have been here with a certified document with an odd seal to show that he has anything. So far, the only thing uh, that Mr. Obama has shown is a computerized image that could have been created yesterday that he was posting on Marvin t shirts. Marvin t shirts are not a kind of official evidence. Not one single judge in the country has found that Mr. Obama is legitimate for president. All the cases are, you know, we call it in the media, all the statements that came from Mr. Obama's attorney, Mr. Jablonski, that the issue was litigated, it was proven his eligible. That wrong. It was never litigated on the merits. Not one judge stated that Mr. Obama has a valid voice certificate. Not one judge stated that he's about, he has a valid social security number. Not one judge found that Obama is legally his name or that person sitting in the White House is in case Barack Obama. Uh, it was never heard on the merits. It was never heard in the court of law on the merits. And therefore, uh, the plaintiffs are uh, asking uh, to rule on the merits. Uh, also, because our report that you have ever received, I will ask your owner for matters of victory. I've worked for three years trying to get the original document, it was threatened, detained, uh, and without a letter of victory from your owner to uh, the person who lives in Hawaii to issue a local subpoena to the Department of Health and letter of victory to the district court. We had uh, Mr. Obama's passport, immigration, and social security records. We would not be able to get any original records. So I would ask not only to find that Mr. Obama is not eligible based on the documents that we have, but also let us hold it away so we can disclose all the original records that they did on to the other states. So there will be consistency between all 50 states. And Mr. Uh, the sentence has stated, if it wasn't in anybody else, uh, it, it would have found, so according to our life and the foundation, uh, uh, we are all people under the law in this country. Uh, a, a person, a poor person in the poor house, or, or a president in the White House, are all people under the law, and I am asking your own to also hold Mr. Obama in contempt of court due to the fact that he did not issue and he intentionally is receptive to this body of the Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Hansel. May I have your exhibits from yes. those? Yes, you please. May I, may I, in case, may I have the exhibits? Thank you very much. This concludes the hearing for today. Have a good day. Oh, I'm not going to
Hi, Susan Danis. Can you just tell us how you thought it went today? Um, I thought it went very well. Um, obviously, each of us brings something different uh, to this hearing. And uh, when you put it all together, it becomes very compelling. Well, good to meet you. I know it's very bad. And Susan, how do you think, um, when it comes to your testimony, what you offered on the record, oh, tell us tell us what you did offer on the record, um, just to reiterate that. Yeah, I started two and a half years ago on this, and what I did was I started by just running this name on databases that were only uh, accessible to people who were licensed, private investigators or law enforcement. I uh, discovered immediately the Connecticut Social Security number and knew immediately that it was fraudulent. Because based on all the years I've been a investigator, I knew was not, there, there was no way that it was accurate. So then I started doing uh, background information on running the social security number and started coming up with all these different addresses with him and that address all over the country. You now, as I mentioned, uh, in Illinois, he was home. in Massachusetts when he was a student there, in Washington when he was a senator. Um, with these addresses, uh, the more work I did with the addresses, then I found the year 1890, which appeared when I found the original social security numbers. Um, uh, I then ran the phone number, there was the same phone number with every address, obviously it must have been solved, because it traveled with every single address. I ran those, and again, half the time it would come up with his date of birth and the other part of the time would come up the year 1890. Now we know he was not born in 1890. The number was issued in March of 77, and was able to prove that the documents through Social Security based on other numbers around his and found that it was issued in March 1977 without a publication it had been and he was 15 years old at the time. Um, in February of 1977 he was playing on the JV basketball team in Hawaii Kumho, and they even went to the state finals but the following month he's, he's in Connecticut applying for a social security number. I don't so. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much for coming to Atlanta and, and testifying. My pleasure. Believe me, I've been waiting for two and a half years for the opportunity to tell people that he's using a fraudulent social security number. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you.